reception from Telstra Stadium in Sydney. The Swans leading Carlton by one point, 2-4 to 2-3. French in the ruck against Goods. French got the tap out. Bolton soccer's off the ground, only as far as Houlihan, who thumps it inside 50. McCormack charges out towards it for the Blues. Here's Leo Barry, eight possessions in the opening term. Twisting and turning, did well. Released the handball to Craig Bolton. Runs through traffic, gives it to Goods. Goods will flip it over the top to Fosdyke. And the Swans are away around centre wing. Favola giving chase. Fosdyke, beautiful kick inside 50. Spotted up Nicks on the lead. Nicks goes towards Hall and hits him on the chest. 40 metres out from goal. Oh, it's a terrific, terrific bit of play. Nick Fosdyke, that's what the Swans want. They get numbers back. Once they win possession, they carry the ball. Terrific kick from Nick Fosdyke. Saw Matty Nicks. Kicked it laterally, spotted up the lead. And in turn, Matty Nicks. There's always, or generally I should say, a vacant spot where the third umpire will sit in the forward line. Found Barry Hall. Terrific piece of play from the Swans. Fifth possession coming up for Barry Hall. Has one goal one. 45 metres out. Stabs at it and pops it through for his second. Great start to the second turn for the Swans. Two goals to Barry Hall. And that's always going to be a worry to a defender, you see, if the Swans are allowed to come down across half-back in numbers and set it up. Then, of course, you create some space because they have pushed back. That's a nightmare for defenders. And Simon Beaumont, you know, he would like a bit more pressure to be put on. And we just heard Barry Mitchell say that. That's a terrific kiss to kick to space. Allowed Barry Hall not to change pace. Didn't give the oppos opposition any chance to spoil the ball. Sydney by seven points. That man on screen, Barry Hall, has already kicked two goals. Won 55 goals last year. Camper Rally kicks a high ball. Still inside the centre square. Young Wait was caught underneath it. Rattens pounced on it. Just pumps the ball back inside 50. Whitnell came through hard. Now the whistle is gone. And the free kick is going to McCormack. Wolf gets up off the ground. So McCormack, this young boy from the Murray Kangaroos. Ford high, was he? Not much in that. Has a chance to kick his second goal. From 45 metres out, leans back, unloads, gives it both barrels, and hammers it home. Well, they just bob up, don't they, Wayne? Where's this one come from? Well, not too sure where he's come from. That's that relevant now. He's uh, he's certainly coming. Just some young players have the poise when they get an opportunity. They don't look out of place. And John McCormick, he certainly looks as though he's enjoying himself. And why not with two early goals? From the Murray Kangaroos, as we mentioned. Originally from Wangaratta. And he has started very, very well. Four possessions, two goals to John McCormick. And he brings the Blues back within one point. Leo Barry and Adam Goods have nine touches for the Swans to lead the game. Six each to Jude Bolton, Nick Fosdyke, Paul Williams and Ty Canelli. Well for the Blues, Prendergast, Lappin and Spawn with six. for Favola, Thornton and Ratton with five apiece. Camparelli, his first touch. Ineffective. Wiggins, handball smothered, turnover. Crouch, handball just missed its target. He was looking for Maxfield. His coup to Fides for his fourth touch. It was crunched. Players putting their bodies on the line. Crouch taken in a tackle by Wiggins. And we'll have a bounce about 35 metres out from the Sydney goal. Very evident to see what Dennis Pagan has told his charges. Get out there. If you don't have the ball, you put pressure on. Don't let them run it out easily with handballs or kicks. Doyle against French. Picked off the ruck contest by Ratton. Goes towards the outer side. Prendergast lays a hit on Fosdyke. Goods comes in and lays one as well. Leg Hickmont in the process. And Adrian Hickmont will take the free kick. Fourth touch for Hickmott. Goes looking for Whitnell. Punched away. There's McCormick at ground level. Screws it inside 50. Wharf. Taken in a tackle by Wait. Goods feeds a handball to Kennelly. To Kirk. And around the outer side to Saddington. Over the top to Jude Bolton. And the Swans are away. Towards Hall. Reaches him on the bounce. McKay to tidy up for the Blues. Goes looking for Murphy. Intercepted. It comes to Williams. Little chip kick inside 50 to Nicks. Couple of men in space. One of them's Nick Davis, and he takes the name. Well, Nick Davis, uh, from what I've seen in the first part of the second quarter here, was playing Andrew McKay the same way, basically from behind. Andrew McKay did the right thing, went to the contest. Uh, a little bit lucky for Nick Davis, but you've got to be in the right position at the right time. The ball rebounded, was lucky enough to get a kick uh, from Matty Nicks. Third touch coming up for Nick Davis. Chance to kick his first goal for the Sydney Swans. 
30 metres out, directly in front, and he pops it through. Nick Davis gets his first. He'd be happy there, a few cobwebs, and I'm sure he would have been nervous, but I just think with Nick Davis, you can't always play KB, a defender from behind. He doesn't have height, he's blessed with speed. Andrew McKay wouldn't be that quick. He's certainly getting towards the end of his career, and I think sometimes when you play from behind, you do look as though you're lethargic and not putting pressure on when you don't have the ball. You summed it up well, Wayne, because I saw that contest and I thought he should have been at the contest in the first place. Well, Sydney, 4-4-28, lead by seven points. Carlton, 3-3-21. And certainly that would do Nick Davis's confidence a lot of good. His first goal for the Sydney Swans is slapped on that time by Goods, pounced on by Lappin. Playing across half-back, high ball, back to the edge of the centre square. McCormack stood his ground, punched away that time by Canelli, overrunning the ball. Camparelli just weaves his way through traffic. Inside 50, looking for Favola. Did well, got a hand to the ball. Goods. Easy as you like from half-back. This is where they're having trouble, Carlton, because the Swans do run in numbers across half-back. They'll just share the ball around. Leo Barry tumbles the ball forward. Chance for Ratton. Gets good support from Kutafidis. Heads towards the boundary line for a toss back in. 28 plays, 21. And McKernan just warming up on the boundary line. Ready for some more action. Two goals to Barry Hall, singles to Nick Davis and also Matthew Nix. And for Carlton, John McCormack. New boy from the Murray Kangaroos under 18. Off the rookie list has booted two goals and one to Brendan Favola. Adam Goods. Athletic, kicks the ball back. And here's McKay playing in front of Nick Davis. So the All-Australian goes wide. And this is where Lappin will be a problem for Sydney. He is a clever player. He can snip a kick and a possession. Big pack of players. Loose ball. Chance for Sydney. They come away. They'll share it again. Davis on the half-back flank. Twisting and turning. The man with the dancing feet. McKay sees the ball over the line for a toss back in. So it's Sydney by seven points. Just over 15 minutes remaining in this second term. Andrew McKay, the Carlton champion, finds Lappin, just forward to the wing, lays on, scrubby kick inside 50. See Wayne, that's what he does well Lappin, he, he, can, he can smell a kick can't he? he, he just knows how to pick up an easy possession, across half back, get lots of possession, therefore he can pump the ball inside 50. And I also think that that looks as though it's part of the game plan, when Matthew Lappin or more so Carlton have the ball, if he's free, give the ball to him because generally he's a very good disposer of the football. Well, he's not being picked up himself, so as long as he can keep his man under control and knows when to actually move off him, he'll be very dangerous across half-back. Second possession from Camparelli from 55 metres out. Goes for distance, couldn't quite get it there. We'll have a ball up adjacent to the behind post. And it poses an interesting question. If Matthew Lappin continues to get possessions, does Paul Ruse go in at half-time and think perhaps we've got to tag Matthew Lappin, Lappin from the half-back flank with a player of our own? Seven touches for Lappin, leads the game for the Blues. It's in the danger zone for Sydney. Canelli by hand to Saddington to Creswell. Sells the dummy to McCormack. Back to Saddington, over the top to Bolton. Sense the trouble and drew a free kick by holding the man against Ratton. So Jude Bolton, his ninth touch coming up. Just set to blossom as a senior player, Jude Bolton. He's played 67 games since debuting in 1999. He's now a senior player in this line at McKay. This Again, I can really play McKay. Beat Davis to that contest and took the mark. Thumps it high and long inside 50. Numbers attack it. French got hands to the football. Camparelli lost his feet at ground level. Barry comes charging through. Handball into the path of Matthews. Searching kick, looking for Barry Hall. He's got a man over the top, Stevens. Unfortunately for Hall, he dropped the mark. Held it long enough to be paid then couldn't move it on quickly to Stevens. So Hall, six touch coming up. Inside 50, good strong lead from Stephen Doyle. He wanted that mark, went up and took it emphatically. Yeah, big Stephen Doyle. Had a uh, tough year last year, played a couple of great games, but uh, unfortunately succumbed to injuries. Matty Lappin pushed back there, had an opportunity. It was a little bit, of, I should say, in two minds, perhaps, should I or shouldn't I? Probably should have gone and made Stephen Doyle uh, work for the mark, but uh, 
he'll go back and have a shot uh, relatively directly in front. He could be one of the surprise packets of the season. I saw him play against the Tigers last year and he took three towering marks in the goal square. I mean, have a look at the size of this player. So here's Doyle from just inside 50. Something long kick. And importantly for him and the Swans, it's also straight. Well, he's got to be about six foot seven, I reckon, Doyle. He's a monster of a man. And he has got great hands. Uh, we saw that last year when he just tore the Tigers apart in one quarter. Uh, I know he had some injuries after that, which was disappointing for the Swans. But he's mobile. But the thing that impressed me that night against the Tigers is that he doesn't fumble the mark. No, he's, one grab. he's got great hands and he certainly presents himself and he's quite aggressive and I think that will help in just slowly introducing Jason Ball to more ball, uh, game time. Handy advantage for the Swans. They're out to a 13-point lead now. Middle stages of this second term. Goods gets the centre clearance for Sydney. Dribbles it towards half forward. One-on-one -on -one contest between Murphy and Williams. Murphy got there first and finds the boundary. Justin Murphy playing his 100th game for Carlton. Just two possessions so far, KB. Camparelli, yes. just the two as well, two of their prime movers. Got a job playing on Paul Williams. They'll have to be very careful with Leo Barry across half back. half back because he's given so much run he's had 10 possessions and he's done it with dash Matthews waiting for the ball he's got Ratton to beat looking for a fine bounce with Fosdyke rockets the ball they run hard Kirk tumbles the ball inside 50 thumped away pounced on by Williams Maxfield the skipper centering kick looking for Nicks chance for Doyle quick snap he has missed to the right So the big man strutting his stuff at ground level. He did a good job for a chap that's 203 centimetres to bend down there and gather the loose ball. Well, he's athletic, no doubt about that. He did very well. Murphy. Beautiful kick goes wide. He's looking for Kudafidis. Just hasn't quite found his touch so far tonight. High ball. McKernan. Best and fairest winner last year for the Blues. Looking for Favola, got him. He's pretty quick, Favola. He's a great leader. Chance now for Manton, who's on the field. Couldn't take it. Williams across half back. Now this is when the run starts. They'll set it up, walk goes short, looks for Stevens. Great grab in front. And then the space happens. Here's Crouch in front of Murphy. Tried to drill it, that was a poor option in the end. Bolton has got a chance. Couldn't take it. Doyle, this time those clean hands. Up to the forefront. And finally over the line for a toss back in. Now, I reckon he hurt his leg before Doyle when he had that snap just a few moments ago. With some problem. Just 25 metres around from the Swans goal. Doyle from behind, good play. Playing in front that time. And because he took the ball, Prendergast actually took the ball out of the air. It was deemed prior possession. I reckon that's what the umpire has paid. Let's have a look. Prendergast in front, takes the ball. And because he didn't handball it, gee, he's got a bit of shove in the back as well. So Doyle has got his second goal. He looks dangerous. He's uh, got off to a good start, Stephen, but you sometimes find that KB when there's a definite height advantage uh, around the ground or in a ball up. Players will scrag and scrimmage other players because there's a definite height advantage. I don't know if there was a great deal of talk out there because 
players would understand the new rules that have been brought in. So in the defensive pass, you'd have to do things that were very basic, very simple, and the team knew. So it's a poor mistake, really. We should explain this, that from boundary throw-ins and, and ball-ups, that if you want to actually take the ball out of the air, instead of knocking the ball on yourself, it's deemed that you've had prior possession to do so. And as a result, you must handball it or kick it. Steve. And in that case, of course, uh, you put yourself under a lot of pressure. Now, I reckon he's hurt himself, young Dor, because he's left the field. The Blues on the ropes, they trail by 20 points, they need a goal. Crouch, the Swans growing in confidence. Inside 50 again, McCormick fisted to the line, and we will have a throw in. Anthony Kudafidis runs the boundary line. Uncontested possessions this quarter, 19 to three in favor of Sydney. They are just getting the ball in open space and starting to cut the Blues up through the middle of the ground. Throw in. Prendergast and Goods. Goods slaps it over the back looking for Schneider. Picked off by Ratten. Goes towards the wing looking for Lappin, but only finds Crouch. The ball's going to come back in again for Sydney. Fourth touch for Jared Crouch, playing his 109th consecutive game since debuting way back in round seven of 1998. Wonderful effort as he goes to the forward 50 and finds Nix. He's looked dangerous all evening as a mobile option inside 50. Matthew Nix. We go short to the lead of Barry Hall. They set up well, give Hall plenty of space to run into. And when the kicks is as precise as that, it's nigh impossible to stop. It's a tough angle, but um, I just think that it highlights the importance of a well-weighted kick. You don't always have to drill the pass. I know it does look nice, but you've got to kick to your teammates' advantage. Terrifically well-weighted kick from Mandy Nix, and allowed Barry Hall to not change pace and take an easy, uh, contest uncontested chess mark. Well, you can't get any more behind Barry Hall than that. He's just going to lean on the camera as he runs in. He'll stay right behind this kick. That's exactly what Barry's got in front of him. On its way. And you saw it just fade away to the right-hand side for a behind. Two goals, two to Barry Hall. I wonder if uh, Tiff can uh, maybe catch a sight maybe of, of Doyle and see where the problem is with uh, Stephen Doyle because... Uh, just then they had to look for Barry Hall. I think the kick wanted to go long but because Doyle wasn't in the goal square. That's why they had to go for Barry Hall on that long lead. Let's head boundary side. Here is Tiffany Jerry. Stephen Doyle is getting his knee assessed at, at the moment. Right now, in fact, the hit there are assessing his ACL ligament and the physio went out to him just before they brought him off and uh, he was certainly grabbing at his knee. So it doesn't look too promising for Stephen Doyle. Goods takes it out of the ruck. They'll contest 20 metres out from Sydney's goal. McCormick a well-timed fist. Maxfield at ground level. Pounces and goals. Beautiful goal from Stuart Maxfield. And the Swans threatening to blow this game wide open as we take a look at Stephen Doyle. And of course, Tiff being a physiotherapist knows all about this. And uh, I saw him, I reckon when he had that snap shot, he just seemed to um, hurt his knee. Maybe he just wrenched it. But there they are having a look. This young man's had quite a few injuries, but he has kicked two goals tonight, and he's on his feet. Well, all of a sudden, it's a 27-point lead to Sydney. 7-6-48, the Blues 3-3-21. Maxfield, the skipper. Bottom of the pack, Wiggins, the tackler. Just over eight minutes left in this second quarter. Sydney led by one point at quarter time. They've extended now to 27. Camparelli, playing for the free kick, taken away by Spawn, had it and lost it. Goes hard at the ball, good second effort. Still inside the centre square. It's going to be hard to win games, KB, when your five named players, Murphy, Ratton, Camparelli, Kudafidis and McKernan, have only accumulated 19 possessions between the lot. So McKernan in the ruck, Camparelli. Must have hurt you then, Wayne. Big torpedo looking for Favola. Houlihan on the charge. Can't bend it back. Through for a minor score. But what he did then, Houlihan, is what you would think Dennis Pagan wants. Strong contesting by Favola. Crumb comes to the ground. Medium-sized player at the foot of the pack. Matthews to Maxfield. Such a penetrating kick, Maxfield. The ball travels very fast through the air. It's always been one of his great strengths. Kudafidis, long footed by the ball. Fosdyke does well. And just hammers the ball to Sneeder. He's got it. Young man. 
His first game from the ACT, Glandula Fever last year. Looking for a big bad Barry and he's got him. I think it's just the run of the Swans at the moment, Wayne, that's causing all the trouble. He's going back to Schneider. So back to Schneider. Take two, finds Williams. What a great pickup he's been. To Bisson Ferris in the past two years. He'll be shooting from just on 50. Plenty of goal space. It's a decent size run up he's got. I know he does prefer to have the shot on the run, so he's giving himself plenty of space here. Nine possessions to Paul Williams. This to extend the lead to 32 points. Williams. Straight through the centre. Great kick. Yeah, you're right, KB. The, the run of Sydney is starting to cause problems and headaches for Carlton. I think with those five main players uh, not winning enough of the ball for Carlton, it certainly puts their young brigade under pressure. What's actually happening now is Sydney know that Carlton are just kicking it long in towards forward 50. They rebound the, quite, the ball quite uh, easily and they run in numbers and waves. So the margin out to 32 points. Swans taking control of this contest. Near the Ruckman an effective tap. Smothered off Wiggins' boot. Rebounds to Murphy. He'll thump it long inside 50. For Vola there. Kudafidis as well for the Blues. At ground level it is Kudafidis. Tried to get it to Hume. McKernan a chance for the Blues but it'll sit for him. Matthews there to harass him. Kept his feet did Ben Matthews. Did well. Got in the contest and forced the ball up. Kudafidis three possessions, Camparelli three, Hume two, Murphy two, Whitnell one. That's the story of the night for the Blues. They need some of their senior players to get their hands on the football. Because on the other side of the equation, Sydney senior players are standing up and delivering at the moment. Ball, got the tap down. Franchina, quick little give to Houlihan. Flying snap from Houlihan. Misses everything to the near side. Stephen Doyle continues to receive attention to that troublesome knee. Just over five and a half minutes remaining in the second term. Maxfield will switch play to the broadcast side. Goes looking for and finding O'Keefe. That's what he does. Fantastic, isn't he, Wayne? The, the ability to kick the ball quickly through the air, even though Favola was only about three or four metres away, it just got to him. Yeah, Stewie's got a very penetrating kick and, and does it well, and, and I think that that's a strength in his game, and Paul Roos is not afraid to use that. O'Keefe goes high towards the wing. Stevens is his target. Got in the back of Prendergast, and Prendergast will take the free kick. Seventh touch for Ian Prendergast. Had plenty of work to do in the defensive half so far this evening. Goes inside 50. Kudafid is his target. Houlihan flew as well. Franchina fumbled at ground level. It was whisked away by Bolton. Houlihan again piles in on top of it. We'll have a bounce 55 metres out from Carlton's goal. In this turn, the Swans have added six goals to one. To turn a one-point lead into a 32-point break. And there is the story in the second term. Marks inside 57 to 1. Sydney's forward line looking potent. Free kick, ruck infringement against Ball. It's coming back to Corey McKernan. Thumps it high to the square. Some marking power there for the Blues. Hickmont flies over the top. Favola waits down. Flying snap from Brennan. Favola is clapping at it. its bending, but not enough. And misses to the right hand side. One goal three to Brennan Favola. And the margin back to 31 points. Dying stages of the second term. The Blues need a goal. Maxfield goes short and finds Bolton. That's Craig Bolton for the Swans. Just holds it up and assesses his options. The Blues going man on man. Bolton towards the wing. McKernan and Ball wrestle. Spills to the back. Crouch explodes off the pack. Gives a handball to Williams, he can have a run. He can go all the way, Paul Williams. He runs the 52 metres out, loads it up, and puts it through. Great goal. 
That is trademark Paul Williams. He's made a career out of it. And what a deadly finisher he is on the run. Yeah, he's uh, got such good finishing skills. But put that ball, if we take the ball, we take go back a play before where there was a contested mark. Jason balled it extremely well. It was probably out of position, but was had the presence of mind to tap the ball in the path of Jared Crouch. Two guys with a lot of speed on Sydney's behalf. And Paul Williams, a great finish, great goal. That man on screen's having a big night. A couple of goals, plenty of possessions. McKernan comes charging in. Kirk works hard at the bottom of the pack. Inside 50. Lappin. He's battled hard across half back. Coming away that time was Thornton. Goes short. Finds Franchina. So the Blues desperate for a goal to 50. Whitnell has hardly touched the ball. Pounced on by Hume. Can he set it up? Good kick. Finds for Bowler. Well, I reckon he's been good, Brendan Favola. He's, you know, he's attacked the ball. He's, he's had opportunities to kick goals. He's kicked one three. He's kicking probably has let him down a little bit. But he looks like the 2003 is going to be a watershed year for him. He looks like he's fired up. I like his attitude tonight. This is a must for Carlton. 35 metres out. No angle. Couple of steps. Hit the post. One goal four to Brendan Favola and the Blues. Trail of the Sydney Swans, 9-6-60, 3-6-24. Canelli. They're just running the ball too easily out of defence. The Sydney Swans. Good sets himself in front at the back. Schneider. How did he do that? Edge of the centre square. Penetrating kick, looking for Davis, a one-hander! Put that in the scrapbook. Well, he's multi-talented, Wayne. Well, he is. I don't, I don't know if he actually deliberately went for that. He was trying to outbody Andrew Mackay, and the ball just fell into his arms. But nonetheless, did well. Andrew Mackay's not a bloke that you can easily push out of the way. But Nick Davis gets an opportunity, and has had a relatively up-and-down night. But he's an opportunity that he can score his second goal. Well, we're directly behind Nick Davis from the broadcasting box. So we'll tell you if it's going straight through the centre. That's the post. 1-1 one, one to Nick Davis. And the Swans in total control of this game at the moment. The margin out to 37 points. Now, the good thing, Jason, for the Sydney Swans and Wayne will tell you, because we saw them a few times towards the end of last year when they won five out of six. This is the way they played the last half dozen games of the season. They've released the shackles. Lappin goes long from the kick out. Hume off the pack to Whitnell. Advantage paid. The Blues a chance to go inside 50. Favola at the back, a couple to beat again. Kudafidis at ground level. Fed it out to Hickmont. Snaps at goal. Didn't get there. Hands on the head from Adrian Hickmont. And here's another chance for the Swans to just run it out of defence. Matthews, beautiful delivery. Found Jude Bolton between two Carlton opponents. The lead's on from O'Keefe and he honours it again. Their disposal has been precise as they've grown in confidence. And Ryan O'Keefe, backward of the wing. Just over a minute remaining in this half. Paul Roos will go in at halftime, very happy with what he's seen, particularly in this second term. And here's Schneider. Goes towards Hall and he takes the mark. Inside the centre square at Barry Hall. Eight possessions, six marks to him. And Andrew McKay trying to stop Barry Hall on the lead. It's a pretty big ask. Hall goes looking for Davis. We call that a few times this season, I would imagine. Beaumont picks up the crumbs and gives it to Ratton. And he puts it out of bounds on the fall. As the Swans grow in confidence, Carlton's is fast disappearing. KB, Nick Davis looks much better when he presents himself on the lead. Yes, uh, he was playing behind McKay early in the game, but you know when you kick a goal, it gives you a bit of confidence and take a mark. Here's Big bad Barry from outside 50. Goes looking for Williams. Just worked under the ball illegally. Free kick to the dual Sydney best and fairest. 
and Barry Hall just imposed himself, just snatched it out of the hands of Brett Ratton, played on and found a target. Yeah, that's the value of Barry. He doesn't have to be aggressive in any way. He's a strong, bustling type of player. Just keep presenting himself. Just creates a path that keeps the defence honest. They're not too sure which way the Swans are going to go. And uh, look, he's been a focal point up forward. We talk about his strength uh, and his marking ability, but he is very, very quick. Yeah, he's got very explosive pace uh, off the mark. It's very hard to match up on. So this is the icing on the cake for a brilliant first half from Paul Williams. He's kicked two goals. He'll go at this one from about 40 metres out directly in front. On its way. Knew it as soon as it left the boot. Straight as an arrow. And another one to the Swans. Fantastic quarter of football from them. They slammed on eight goals to one to turn a one-point lead at quarter time into a commanding 43-point lead at half time. Paul Ruse goes in happy. What can Dennis Pagan come up with? We'll find out after the break when we return to Telstra Stadium.